Okay, go Broncos. Let's do this again. Can I replace my MacBook with an iPad? I've been attempting this experiment along with many other YouTubers since 2018. And this year, I think the answer is finally yes. But there's a caveat on that for me specifically. Let's talk about that. But hey, before we get started with this video, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. If you're a tech nerd like me and you like simplicity and you like technology and you like learning all about it and seeing what it can do for your life, then you're in the right place. My approach on this channel is a little bit different than you're gonna find everywhere else. My aim is to not create an over-sensationalized and over-produced commercial that's trying to sell you a product. I'm trying to do what I would wanna see is like, hey, I just wanna see a real guy talking about his experience and treating it like we're just hanging out, having a cup of coffee together, telling you my experience. So that's what this channel is all about. So I recently took a road trip with the family. We went down to Tucson just to see family for the holidays. And I thought, what better time when spending a week on the road, what better time to leave my MacBook and take an iPad and kind of force myself out of my comfort zone a little bit to continue to get work done in my regular capacity, but iPad only. And so I did that. Now with iPad OS 26, with full windowing support, I picked up an iPad Pro M4, Magic Keyboard, Apple Pencil Pro, and that was my main computing rig for over a week while I was out of town. So straight up, I'm just gonna tell you, I don't have the devices anymore. I returned them, I'm not going to keep it as a setup. It's not worth it for me. But like I say, it's not as clear cut as it has been in years past. In years past, there was definite hard limits of like, no, this cannot work, it does not work. It's not even worth trying. This year is actually kind of compelling. Like I didn't really run into a whole lot that didn't inhibit me. It just really came down to, I didn't find a need for it. And we'll talk about that more in a minute, but let's talk more about the specifics of what I was actually doing on the iPad. So the iPad is a fantastic device, especially with the Magic Keyboard to be able to type on. There's just a whole new way to interact with emails and word processing and even file management. I store everything in iCloud. Being able to drag and drop files around is actually very nice. And I love that experience. And I know many people use their iPad for watching content, watching videos, browsing social media, stuff like that. So I'm not gonna talk about any of that stuff. I don't really do that on the iPad a whole lot. I'm talking about productive, actual work that I'm trying to get done on the thing. And from a creativity perspective, it's really good. Editing photos, editing video, typing stuff up, it's awesome. But that's not everything that I do. So I manage social media profiles for some companies and so I do a lot of Canva illustrations, I do different graphics, I utilize AI sometimes to help with that, and so I'm bouncing back and forth between those platforms, and the iPad works fine for that. It's a little more finicky in some ways than the Mac is, but I learn the workarounds, and then I get into the posting platforms, and I post using the web app experience through Safari on the iPad, and that's where the experience kind of starts to fall apart a little bit. Because I also build some websites, I do management of some CRM platforms and email campaigns inside of these web-based applications. And the iPad, being an app-first device, relies heavily on an app being developed for the iPad versus using Safari, using it like a browser, like a computer, it doesn't work the same way. Yes, you can technically get desktop websites to load sometimes, not all the time. I couldn't get it to load all the time for some web building applications. It would just load a mobile version. And so I was just limited in what I could do in that I had to grab my MacBook for that. Because it's this weird ground of like, you think you can access the web page, like you can see the web page, but the cursor would like stop working for the trackpad on like the on the screen, like the actual mouse cursor on screen, it's like it wouldn't click the elements anymore. Or I had to use my finger. It's like sometimes the cursor would work, sometimes my finger would work, sometimes I'd have to use the pencil. And so it would like actually register a click differently depending on the input method that you used. And I noticed it would do this after like three or four clicks on a web page, and I'd have to refresh the whole web page. And then it would like work again for another three or four clicks. And it would time out all weird randomly. Like it's very, much not right. <laughs> it, and I don't know how else to describe it because when you're using a proper computer like a Mac or something, you, the web applications, they just work. There's load times, there's sometimes glitches and stuff like that. And so when it's on the iPad, it's like, it knows that it's a touch first device, but it's trying not to be. 
And so it just loads itself differently and it times out weird and it scales weird. And so I was constantly running into issues like that where it's not the end of the world, it's usable, but so many refreshes where I just don't have to do that on a Mac. And so that was friction in that sense, but it still technically worked. I didn't, I wasn't able to like not accomplish something except for specific website edits that the page just simply would not load um, in some web builders. So I had to use my Mac for that. That aside, I don't do that work too often. That aside, I could theoretically just use the iPad as my main device when using, you know, creative applications. And so that part of it wasn't awful. It just wasn't great. So to try to like anecdotally summarize this, it was so much nicer to reach for the iPad than for the Mac. I found that I would use the iPad because I preferred the experience working on it, but I would hit limits and I would hit walls, either frustration or just quite simply couldn't do it, limits. And then I have to grab the MacBook out of necessity and then I could get done what I needed to get done. So in short, the iPad is a nicer way to accomplish tasks but the MacBook is more of a foolproof way to accomplish the tasks, if that makes sense. And another way to put it is I simply have not run into too many instances using my Mac where I go, man, I wish I had an iPad to do this. Like hardly ever do I think that. Sometimes I think, man, it'd be nicer to do this on an iPad, but it doesn't inhibit the ability to get it done. But the opposite is true, where so many times on the iPad, I think, man, this is like really nice for some things, but I run into things where I'm like, I really just need to grab my Mac for this if I want to get it done quickly and efficiently. And that's kind of the difference. But don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to bash on the iPad. It is like really good for what it is. What the iPad gets right, it gets super right. Like if I need to type out a script for a video, I am 100% wanting to do that on an iPad more than my Mac. If I need to diagram something or draw something out and create a sketch or create like a workflow diagram, 100% doing that on the iPad versus the Mac. Even just photo editing, if I'm just doing some light edits here and there from some creative photos I've taken from a family vacation, 100% the iPad is way more enjoyable to do that on than the Mac. Even just watching content, you know, I mentioned it earlier, like watching content is just great. And so there are some things that the iPad is just so good for that the Mac experience can provide, but it's just not the same. And if you've tried this experiment or you have an iPad, you know what I'm talking about. So the iPad is like one of these devices that you think you need and you feel like you're missing out and you just absolutely could use one. And then you buy one and you realize this is not as useful as I thought it would be. So it ends up gathering dust. And by the time you go to pick it up, it's dead because you need to charge it because you haven't used it in how many days. That's kind of the story of every iPad. And so I was starting to feel that a little bit on the iPad. It's like you have to want to use it and choose to use it for work, but it definitely fits into this narrower window of work that I'm actually able to do on it timely and effectively. If I have all the time in the world, sure, but there's also just deadlines and there's things I have to get done quickly. I can't spend all day on one or two tasks. As soon as you start using an iPad for like spreadsheet, development applications, things like that, it like the experience quickly begins to fall apart. And you know exactly what I'm talking about if you've tried any of that yourself. And I just want to put out there that I'm not new to this. Like I said, I've been doing this experiment since 2018. I'm very familiar with iOS and iPad OS now and all the different workarounds and tweaks and things you have to do to get things to work. And I, I understand how the share menus work and share sheets and all that stuff. And so I'm not green to it but there is still so much friction in it for what I need to do that it's like, it's not, I'm not even sure if it's worth fighting this battle. It's like, I would sit there on my iPad getting some work done and go, man, okay, I have to get a few more things done that re will require my MacBook. Do I choose to do those? Do I choose to go get my MacBook now? Or do I put that work off or can I do something else? In the meantime, it's like, I spent more time figuring out how to adjust my work day and my workflow around using this device instead of just doing what I need to do. It's like the Mac kind of gets itself out of the way where you can just do what you need to do and then you're done and you focus on the work itself versus the iPad is more like, okay, if I'm choosing to use this, what work can I realistically do on this now? What work do I have to push off to later when I'm in front of my computer? It's that kind of a thought process that creates an extra step in it. And that, those are the reasons why I think it's a little bit frustrating that I can work around that, but I don't necessarily want or need that extra bit of friction in my workflow. So what I recommend buying an iPad and using it as your main computer, uh, 
Yes, for some people, for some people. I know that I just spent this whole video talking about how terrible of an experience it was for me. The reality is it's totally doable for most people. Most people utilize their computer for word processing, for some emails, for some online shopping, for watching some stuff, and they probably have an iPad anyway. And so I see the point that Apple's getting to about have an iPad but stick a keyboard on it and now it's the only computer that you need for the average person. But as soon as you go to that one website or you, you want to do that one thing that's like, I got to make this tweak or make this edit or I run a business or I got I to gotta modify this thing. It's like there are just little experiences that you'll hit where the whole thing just falls apart and you're like, I should have bought a computer, <laughs> a real computer. The iPad is not a computer. In the technical sense, it is, but it's not for everybody. And so I think the price point is what makes it hard to justify. If it was like half the price, granted you can buy a, an entry level, a cheaper iPad or an iPad Air and get it for significantly less. The iPad Pro bundle I had was like $1,300, $1,400. And that's just outrageous. I'm like, I, my MacBook Air was less than that and I can accomplish more on that machine. And so dollar for dollar, dollar for value, I don't think it's the best value device, but if you kind of got a lower end model, depending on what you use it for, I could realistically see where it would be a decent device. That's why, you know, I've returned it, but I'm still using my iPad mini. This is the only iPad I ever need and the only iPad I use most of the time because it's the only one I have now, but it's the whole iPad experience. It's touch first. And yes, it has iPad OS 26. And sometimes I'll dock it to my monitor like a crazy guy and use the, the built-in, you know, screen mirroring and I can connect my keyboard and my trackpad to it because it's a nice experience to type up scripts and things like that. Like the typing experience is still there, but I don't need to buy a whole nother device for just a few instances. Like this is fantastic. It's my digital notebook. It's my teleprompter. It's my scripting device. It's my photo editing device. Like the things I use an iPad for have not changed, whether it's the big pro or not. I think the iPad at the end of the day, it just, it still remains a solution looking for a problem. And that's that weird area that a lot of people sit in with it, I think. The issue I have with that is that it's a darn good solution. It just is, it's a darn good solution, but it's still just looking for that problem. And me using my MacBook in combination with the iPad mini, I essentially, I get the entire iPad experience. There's nothing I'm missing out on by not having the iPad only set up. By going that way, I cut off the ability to do other certain workflows. And that's just me personally, that's my struggle. But I totally understand where some people, depending on your industry and your job, having an iPad, especially in like a field environment where you have cellular capabilities and you can just take work orders and signatures and do documentation and contracts, absolutely, that's where an iPad shines. But to think it's going to replace a lot of fundamental computer applications where you're sitting at a desk and doing knowledge work, that's where it starts to fall apart and have more fragmentation in my experience. But let me know what you think. What's your experience with the iPad? Have you tried this experiment? Do you have an iPad Pro, iPad Mini? What do you use your iPad for? Or is it just gathering dust like everybody else's? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.